Först vill jag rikta en stor tack till Göran Gustafsson stiftelse för det fina priset. Och jag vill berätta om syftet med vår forskning där vi försöker att förstå hur vissa vita blodkroppar kan döda våra egna celler och hur det här är viktigt för vår hälsa. Och jag hoppas ni kan ursäkta mig men jag tror jag tar det på engelska resten av presentationen. Så so, what I hope you will appreciate is, is how we've been uh, really using basic research to drive uh, some clinical applications. And the research problem that we're really interested in is uh, this, that we have 40 trillion cells in our body. Each one of these are uh, susceptible to infections or may acquire mutations which can uh, then render them malignant. So how does the immune system recognize and deal with such aberrant cells? Well, all, pretty much all cells in our body uh, express messenger molecules, uh, which then purvey uh, signals of what's going on inside the cell. And uh, certain immune cells can sense these um, messages and detect when cells are expressing foreign or uh, unusual um, material. They then bind these cells and can kill them through uh, direct eradication. However, infected or malignant cells can also try to evade these systems by not expressing the messengers. And how are they then uh, detected? Uh, well, there we have another cell type, which uh, through uh, a lot of investigation here at Karolinska Institute actually, uh, have been shown to act on such cells that no longer present uh, the, uh, the messages. So a lot of my research is really focused on how these cells recognize such cells that don't have uh, the correct messages of, of what's going on inside. And uh, we really studied the molecular processes there. And this is just an image uh, showing a uh, such killer immune cell and where we can see the, the green granules where you've focused a lot of protein that's required for killing the target cell and which is focused towards the target cell and then released in order to specifically kill off infected or malignant cells. So through these, um, through these studies, we've really generated a lot of very sensitive assays uh, for how we can study this process. So how impo important is immune cell killing for our health? Well, a number of investigators uh, in France and, and also here uh, with Jan Inge Henter have uh, identified individuals with either defective granules or unable to release these granules uh, towards the target cell. And these are detected in infants that are born healthy, but invariably develop fatal inflammatory syndromes within the first year of life. Importantly, these can be cured by stem cell transplantation, but they have to be identified rapidly to get the correct treatment. So here we've asked how we can use our basic insights to improve diagnostics. So basically we've defined mechanisms of granular release, and we've used knowledge to improve the assays for detection of uh, immune cell killing. Uh, and these are, these are assays that are used worldwide now and, and uh, been employed to really uh, diagnose uh, several hundred patients. And what you can see here in healthy controls is that we can readily detect that they can release these granules. Uh, in certain patients, they don't have uh, the granule content, but they can still release them. But in the majority of patients, they are unable to reduce, reduce these granules, and we can then pick up them really quite sensitively. And then, of course, we want to try to find the exact molecular cause with the mutations in the DNA. But in Swedish patients, however, we were unable to find these mutations uh, in the known genes that were related to these disorders. So here we have a pie chart where the majority of patients are unexplained. But through uh, various molecular efforts, we were able to identify a non-coding mutation, so outside the genes, that then uh, explain all of these patients in a certain uh, time frame. Uh, and this has also explained a number of patients throughout Europe and, and globally, and really shown that, that non-coding mutations can be a very significant uh, cause of disease. So thereby we can, uh, we can aid rapid and accurate treatment and we can provide prenatal diagnostics uh, to families. 
We've also developed methods to facilitate cost-effective screening uh, of Swedish uh, newborns with these disorders. And uh, with these accomplish accomplishments, we now face new challenges. Uh, and there, very excitingly, we can, we can sequence the entire genome um, now. It's affordable. But with current insights, we can only explain uh, and, and provide a diagnosis for 25 to 40 percent of patients. So we need a better understanding of the non-coding uh, DNA sequences, which represent roughly 99% of our genome. So my long-term um, aim is really to decipher how non-coding mutations um, regulate immune function and impact uh, human health and disease. So with that, I'd just like to thank uh, all patients and families that have contributed to this research, clinical and basic research collaborators, mentors, and of course, a, a lot of fantastic students in, in my laboratory as well.